Thanks everybody for uh, being here today. Um, very special privilege to announce uh, Mickey Calloway as the uh, 21st manager of the New York Mets. Uh, we're very pleased that uh, Mickey will be with us. Uh, he'll have a few remarks uh, in a few minutes, but I thought I'd take just a couple of minutes to uh, talk a little bit about the process uh, by which uh, uh, we reached this decision and uh, brought Mickey to the organization. Um, <clears throat> we started uh, a couple of weeks ago with a very long list uh, in excess of uh, 35 possible candidates. Uh, they fit into a variety of different categories. Uh, some were former managers, some were former Mets in uh, one manner or another. Uh, some were uh, familiar to me or other members of the front office. And then there were some who um, came with a little buzz but were not uh, really known to us as a front office or had previously had any affiliation and, uh, and uh, no managerial experience. Uh, but before we put that list together, uh, we also set out our criteria uh, for selecting a new manager. And the thing that I want to emphasize is that uh, we weren't simply looking for a manager, we were looking for a leader. Uh, <clears throat> and as I think of leadership, I think of uh, really two general uh, requirements. Uh, one is uh, professional competence, and the second is personal excellence. With respect to uh, professional competence, uh, we're talking about credibility, and in some sense, uh, experience uh, leads to that credibility. Um, <clears throat> experience as a player, experience as a coach, experience as a manager. And of course, having done it before uh, suggests greater credibility. But I have to tell you that in our search, uh, while it's important that uh, our new manager be professionally capable, it was more important for us to have someone as a leader who demonstrated personal excellence. Now when I get to that category, you know, we're talking about a variety of things, but among them, a hard worker, someone who's collaborative, someone who's structured but adaptable, patient but decisive, and uh, three or four others that uh, I really won't uh, uh, mention. But it was important for us to have someone uh, who was, in our minds, uh, personally excellent. We <coughs> uh, whittled our list down from 35 or so to six. Among those six, we had representatives of really all the categories that uh, I mentioned. Um, we had planned on having a second round of interviews, but uh, uh, ended our first round and uh, decided there was really only uh, one man for the job. So rather than uh, going to a second round, we spent the rest of our time trying to convince Mickey to come to New York. And uh, <clears throat> I have to tell you that he's coming from a great organization. He's had uh, a tremendous partnership uh, with Tito Francona in Cleveland, and uh, we respect that organization um, uh, tremendously, and uh, I think one of the reasons that we have such confidence in Mickey. So rather than going to a second round, we spent the rest of our time, as I said, trying to convince uh, Mickey to come to New York. And uh, <clears throat> I want to credit Fred Wilpon for uh, uh, finally doing that. Um, Mickey had a uh, three-hour lunch with Fred in the city and uh, Mickey came back from that lunch uh, too exhausted to say anything but yes. <laughs> so uh, it's with great pleasure that uh, uh, I introduce Mickey Calloway as the next manager of the New York Mets and uh, invite uh, Jeff and Mickey to come up with the uniform presentation and then we'll hear from Mickey. Thank you. 
busy here. Okay. Things I'm going to say. <laughs> Put a lot of jerseys on before us. Hope I can button it the right way. <laughs> All right. Well, wait, first, first and foremost, I, I'm probably the most excited guy uh, you're going to see <laughs> in a long time. So, thank you for having me. I get. I look forward to getting to know all you guys, and uh, this is. Uh, Certainly an honor and a, and a treat to be up here, you know, going through this process. If you don't mind, I'd like to thank a few people. Um, I think that's always necessary. Um, I'd like to thank Fred Wilpon, Saul Katz, and Jeff Wilpon for the opportunity to sit up here and be selected as the manager for, for one of the greatest baseball organizations in the world. And with some of the best fans in the world. I've heard the most amazing thing about the fans and I cannot wait to get started. I'd also like to thank Sandy Alderson, John Rico, and JP Ricciardi for guiding me through the selection process and the interview. Um, I think right away when he started asking questions to me in this interview, it became clear that we were on the same page and that we wanted the same things. Um, I'm looking for a place where I can step in and work with the best people in the world to do some special things. And uh, that is why I was so excited when I left that interview. You know, what I won't tell them is, he is you know, they were talking about, well, we had to convince Mickey to come. I called my wife after that interview and it was on speakerphone and my two girls were in the back and after I hung up, one of my daughters said, Dad was so excited. That was great. Of course, I couldn't go ahead and tell everybody that. But uh, I am the most excited guy in the world right now to, to be here and to be able to work, work, work with these people. I'd love to thank my wife and kids, my mom and dad, my brother and sister for always being there in this pursuit of baseball, which is demanding and wonderful. It's the best game in the world. There's a lot of sacrifices that go with that. And I've sacrificed a lot of time with them. And they've been there for me uh, through every minute of it. So I'd like to thank them. I'd also like to thank the Cleveland Indians, um, the Dolan family, Chris Antonetti, Mike Chernoff, Terry Francona, and the rest of the coaching staff um, in Cleveland. I will miss them. They were uh, integral in everything that uh, I stand for, and I took qualities from all those people. I feel like I'd like to thank Derek Falvey, who is now with the Twins, Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins, who are with the Toronto Blue Jays, John Courtright, who has been a life, lifelong friend and advisor. And uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank my pitchers in Cleveland. Um, when I was breaking the news to them about this, I was tearing up. I cared so much about them and who they are as people that uh, it was a very difficult decision. And that was probably the, the hardest part of this whole decision. Um, so thank you to all those people. Uh, okay, well, thanks for allowing me to, to thank some people. Um, a lot of thanks being said. Um, so here we go, man. I am excited to be the 21st manager of the New York Mets. Um, what a great history this organization has. And I did a little studying up on some of the history. And uh, I already knew that Casey Stingle's uh, number was retired and that he was the first manager ever here. Well, Casey Stingle um, is a guy that, that I grew up every day and I heard his name because my brother is named after Casey Stingle. And uh, I was named after Mickey Mantle, so I come from a baseball family. <laughs> my dad, obviously, and my mom are huge baseball fans. Um, the one thing, you know, a little story about Casey Stingle is when Casey Stingle was playing, um, he had a bit of a bad, and, and this is the way it was told around the Ole Miss campus and, and the baseball people in Ole Miss. Um, Casey Stingle's arm was a little sore. Uh, for whatever reason going into the season that year and his high school coach where he was working out in the offseason um, in his hometown knew the head coach at Ole Miss where I went to college 
And so he said, hey, Casey, why don't you go over there to Ole Miss and help them coach? And you can work out and rehab your arm and uh, see if you can get yourself you know, more ready for the season than you would have otherwise. So Casey, the old professor, went over to Ole Miss and rehabbed his arm. And uh, yeah, I thought that was a pretty neat story since I went to Ole Miss. Uh, coincidentally, I at one point in my career had Tommy John surgery. Um, everybody was, the timing of it, everybody was leaving to go play professional baseball in spring training. And uh, I needed people to throw with. So I reached out, uh, looked on the internet for a pitching coach job somewhere at a college to, to insert myself in practice, maybe help some people out. And, uh, and I ended up finding a head coaching job at uh, a little small D3 school um, down in the bottom of uh, Texas. And uh, I thought that was a pretty cool story because it sounded like Casey uh, did the same kind of thing. So uh, that was really neat. I'm so excited to get to know the players. Um, I'm going to leave here probably tonight. I'll start really reaching out to those guys. A few of them are, have already reached out to me. Um, a couple of them got in touch with me yesterday. I had a great, great phone call with David Wright. And uh, there was a, a natural connection there. And his views on leadership and, and what he does for this team are very similar and we're, we're going to be able to collaborate very, very well. And uh, obviously having him around is going to be someone I can really lean on to uh, help this whole process that we're going to have. <clears throat> Excuse me. So how, what, are the, what can the players expect? We're going to care more about the players than anyone ever has before. And we're going to know that they're human beings and individuals. And this is going to be a group that feels that every day we come to the clubhouse. And that's going to be our main concern, is to show them that we know this game is difficult and we care about you as a player, a human being, and, and about your personal life. Um, we're going to value their work, we're going to value the way they collaborate and communicate, and we're going to value their dedication to the culture that we're trying to build. We know that they are human beings and their numbers or stats are going to be a byproduct of how durable, prepared, and aggressive they are, and that's it. We're not going to have expectations on numbers. I'm going to have expectations that they're going to work the right way to go put up numbers. And if that happens, great. If not, I'm going to be happy that they worked as hard as they could and did everything they can to go out there and succeed. We will also ask them to do more than anybody ever has before. Okay, our group is going to become a team because of our losses, our mistakes, the little rifts we have in the clubhouse. They're going to know that those things are okay as long as we are trying to get better and learn from those things. We're going to use all of those things to strengthen our bond as a group and to become the team that we want to be. And in the end, if we can do that, we're going to be the strongest team we possibly can, and that's going to allow us to do exactly what we want on the field and not have the pressure of those expectations. I am so ready to get out of here and get this done so I can start talking to the players and we can start all the things that we have on our to-do list. Um, it, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling right now. I'm so honored and flattered that uh, I get this opportunity and I am looking forward to the best fans in the world and showing them every day that, that we care and we know that we wouldn't have jobs without the fans. And we're gonna spend a lot of time showing that appreciation to them as we move along. So thank you for everything, and I'm excited to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm elated. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll open it up for questions and answers for both Mickey and Sandy. We ask you please state your name and affiliation so Mickey can get to know some members in the room. Mickey, Sandy, Steve Gelbs, right here, SNY. Uh, Mickey, congratulations, welcome to New York. Sandy, this is for you, though. You mentioned 
that you had originally planned to have a second round of interviews, and, and clearly Mickey blew you away with that first interview. What specifically stood out to you to the point where you felt comfortable making him the guy that quickly? Well, I think that uh, there were a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, sort of uh, intellectual, if you will, there, there seemed to be a real uh, consistency between Mickey's approach and and our approach, and you know what he was looking for uh, in the way of uh, managing, and what we were looking for in the way of a leader in the clubhouse. There was definitely that. Uh, but more emotionally, I think we came out of, uh, all of us in that meeting came out of it excited about the possibility that Mickey would be our manager. And uh, that's a, you know, a visceral re reaction. It's not one that you, know, you can put down on a checklist, but to me that said everything, and I think it was consistent throughout the group. Mickey, uh, Josh Lewin, Mets Radio. Great to see you again. Good to see you. A and welcome. Thank you. At what point for you, in your uh, travels, in your process, did you think manager, whether it be a minor league manager, major league manager, at what point did that light come on for you if this is what you wanted to do? Um, probably when I was um, rehabbing my arm and took over that team in um, Laredo, Texas. I think that uh, right away, just leading that group of young people, I knew that this is what I wanted to do. And quite frankly, it was kind of hard. And I, got, I think I got to play for a half season after I did that. And quite frankly, it was hard to really concentrate on playing after that feeling. And I, I was ready to start coaching. And you know, if, if I really thought hard and long about it, that would have been the spot. Um, all along, I've kind of had a plan that I want. And pitching coach was first. Manager would have been second, and someday I'd, I'd love to, you know, be where, where Sandy is at some it. point, <laughs> way, way in the future. But uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it's something I've thought about all along. Hey, Mickey, Pete McCarthy, WOR. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, what is it about this particular job, this group, that you thought this was the right challenge for you and the right time to become a, a big league manager? Well, first, I mean, we're in the greatest city in the world. <laughs> I mean, this is one of the greatest fr franchises in the world. So that right away enticed me when I heard that, you know, when Sandy called me and said, hey, we want to interview you. I think second, when I sat in the room and listened to the uh, words that uh, Sandy, JP, and John, and Jeff were, were saying to me and the, the questions they were asking me, I knew right then that, that we were going to be in alignment and what we wanted. And that's why I was so excited when I called my family after. So uh, the team itself, the pitching is something that can be some of the greatest you know, guys on the planet. So that obviously is very uh, exciting to me. I think that uh, our position players are also in that same category. I mean, when I look at the, the New York Mets, I see a team that can contend and compete with anybody. And that's what we'll work hard to do. Mickey, Bruce Beck, WNBC TV. How you doing? How do you balance being liked as a manager and being respected? And how do you build the harmony in the clubhouse? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think you necessarily set out for guys to like you. Um, you show them every day that you care about them, and we will care about them. It won't just be an act. We're going to you know, spend time with these guys every day in the clubhouse, and I'm going to love every one of them. And uh, I'm going to show them day in and day out by the decisions I make, the way I communicate with them, that I truly, truly care about them. So uh, you know, if I can do those things, and it's going to be hard, and it's going to be hard and long hours, and it's going to be tons and tons of communication. If I can do that consistently and do all the things that we talked about in my interview, then I don't have to wonder if people like me. They're going to like me and respect me. Mickey, hi, how are you? Andy Adler, Pix 11 News. Uh, welcome to New York. Uh, you mentioned you're anxious to get going and get things going. What is your first move as Mets manager? I'm going to reach out to the players. I think they uh, deserve, I know they, they got the news, obviously, from some other source than myself. But I'm going to reach out to them 
let them know how excited I am. And uh, we're going to start this uh, very, very, very important off season for this 2018 season. This uh, next three months are going to be critical to what we are trying to do during the season. And we're going to get to work right away. Rich Catino, ESPN Radio, welcome to New York. Um, two things resume, resonate on your resume. One is how pitchers got better year after year under you, and the second is sitting near Terry Francona every single waking <laughs> moment. Can you talk about those two things and what that, as what kind of a professional that's made you become? Well, I mean, just being around Tito, all those things that we talk about he does on a daily basis, and just being around him and seeing what it takes to be a really good manager, obviously, I, it prepares me for whatever I have to do. He's, he's the best out there, uh, bar none. I've been around some of the best in the game. And he's the best. And he truly cares about everyone. And he is prepared. He prepares his players. He empowers his staff to do their jobs. And uh, I couldn't have been under anybody better to prepare me for this job here in New York City. Um, I don't know if you guys have been around Tito or asked him questions, but uh, he's the best there is at, you know, knowing what the, the media needs. And he respects y'all's job and that y'all are trying to do your job every single day. And uh, he's relaxed and, and gives you guys the answers, and I will do the same thing. Hi, Christy Ackert, New York Daily News. Uh, for both of you, Sandy and Mickey, um, I would assume pitching coach is going to be high on your priority list. Um, how will that be handled since Mickey has so much experience in that area, Sandy? Well, one of the things uh, that, that uh, we're going to do over the next few days is uh, put together a list of potential uh, pitching coaches. Uh, we already have a partial list. We want to make sure that it's uh, you know as inclusive as possible. But uh, I think that... Uh, you know, Mickey and the front office will work collaboratively uh, to uh, find someone that he's comfortable with. You know, I think it's important uh, to recognize, yes, that uh, Mickey's a former pitching coach, and, and, uh, and it's important for us because uh, that's our strength. Um, but at the same time, you know, Mickey will be focused entirely on the 25-man uh, uh, roster, and so the pitching coach will be very important. But um, again, in looking for a pitching coach, we're looking for somebody who's professionally expert and, and at the same time fits in with uh, the sort of collaborative approach that uh, you know, we're expecting to build here. Hi, Mickey. Tom Marion with AP Radio. Next season, what do you see as your biggest challenge on the field for the team? You know, right now, I um, haven't really been able to sit down and talk to everyone that needs to be talked to. You know, looking from the other side of the field, uh, that would – that would be a mistake to, to comment on that. So I think we all need to sit down and figure out the things that uh, needs to be addressed because we're going to address a lot of those things this winter. Hey, Mickey Beck here, Kevin Marr from News 12 Long Island. This is a team that's had pitchers racked with injuries in your professional career. What's the key to getting pitchers to believe in themselves again when things have gone so much against them? Well, treat them as individuals. You know, I think that uh, anybody can help people as long as you're, you know, treating them individually. And uh, we can do a lot of things to, you know, help some of the things that went wrong. And uh, we're going to make sure that everybody knows the plan and the process that it's going to take for them to, to get better and get healthy so they can go out there and, and use the talent that they have.